this content is for kids. It's not for kids. No, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sen vs. the World. I'm Septum Sen, and this is Kotobuki Jake. All right. I told you guys in the last video, he was going to be here for this pickup. Yeah. So, it's been a while since we've actually had a pickup together. I did a trial run, yeah. and the DVD room had actually been... It's still not fully together, but it's capable of being comfortable in now. <laughs> so right. I'm down to where I've, I've gotten all the way through T. And once all the pipes are rearranged in my house, come weekend, hopefully I'll be able to uh, get everything in place and the room will be in a good shape again. So we've got some fun stuff. So I'm going to let you start us off here. Uh, how does it click this over? All right. So first things first, um, before we launch into the pickups, I think it's uh, worth noting that we lost a big name over the weekend, not necessarily of the entertainment world, but yet, strangely, of the entertainment world because of a recent documentary and biopic, uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, and that definitely uh, is putting us into a strange time. So I'm going to lead off, actually. Uh, I have a theme at start of stuff that I've already watched oh. and I just really want to go ahead and move it into that. Yes. <laughs> one that I actually, uh, I had seen prior and uh, we might have seen together if I remember correctly. Um, and I showed it to the family and, and they enjoyed it. Uh, there, for all of us who are not dead inside <laughs> for the most part, at one point in our lives, there was an individual we all really looked up to, really admired, and uh, they and he was recently the subject of both a biopic and a documentary, sort of biopic and a documentary. And um, I would say this is a movie that we all need to just pop in and watch right now to help reset and recalibrate our mentalities. <laughs> and that is the uh, Tom <laughs> Hanks starring A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, where he yep. plays the late Fred Rogers. And this is a truly excellent film. We've talked about on this channel, so I'm not going to go into too much depth tonight. But uh, it's a really, really good film. Uh, stars Hanks, like I said, is Rogers, Matthew Reese, uh, the, uh, Chris Cooper, uh, directed by Marielle Heller. Excellent film, one of the better ones that came out last year. Sorely underserved by the Oscars, unfortunately, much like the documentary before it. <laughs> but like I said, this is the kind of movie that, that we really do need right now. And uh, if you haven't seen it, get it and give it a look. <laughs> well, so you know, I'm going to start us with a documentary. Actually, a uh -huh. series of two documentaries and uh -huh. they are actually going to be related to something upcoming an upcoming project for our channel and that is the double feature never sleep again the uh, elm street legacy and crystal lake memories the complete history of friday the 13th uh -huh. these are supposedly amazing documentaries they sold out for a long time, but they came back in stock, and I'm like, I want these, and they're and they're grouped together. 
So I went ahead and I got this. I matter of fact ordered a uh, the bonus disc that was coming with uh, this documentary because they put that also. That was supposed to be only for backers, but they're doing a small run. If you get a chance, you should check it out. You know, type this in. Look in bonus disc. Fourteen dollars get you that's an extra four hours of content, and. You know, you can have that and be more complete. I've heard that these are amazing documentaries, but they're very long documentaries. Yeah, it seems that way. So, you know, it's one, I'm not sure. I mean, one's 238 minutes, and the other one is 400 minutes. So, oh boy. Fight documentaries here. That's like, that's like that OJ documentary. <laughs> So it's ones I really want to see, and of course my wife will want to watch them with me on, on this, so we may be sitting there watching part of it nightly as we go, um, but hmm. it's going to be a, a big thing. And we're going to be trying to, I'll bring Jake up here for that, uh, we're going to be trying to, once the box sets come in, uh, go through every Friday the 13th movie starting week after next uh with the fan film vengeance which will be interesting and then hopefully hitting the main series we're hoping by that second week they'll shout will start shipping out those box sets and don't worry i'll get a digital copy of vengeance to you and copies of the regular movies i'm more concerned about whether i'll be able to even yeah. attend these sessions but we'll see or at least part of them anyway and, um, yeah, I don't like coming in late. It's so annoying. But whatever. Well, you know, gotta work. Money, yeah. is, money is good. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, it's gonna be fun. I think. Uh, I want us to start off uh, with the week after next with our Halloween uh, to finish um, ten thirty uh, one two, which. Um, we did the first one last year, so I figured we'll right. we'll do maybe a late one or something to get it done this year. So get her done. <laughs> so I think it's fun, and uh, I'll make sure that just come by the house on like Sunday, and um, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday, and right. I'll for you so you can check it out. <laughs> <laughs> it might be doable. We'll see. All right, so um, he had to go and do what looks like a pretty solid two pack. I have a decidedly mixed two pack, and these next few have the um, the uh, uh, um, 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 theme that we've I've mentioned them and probably sort of presented each one during our discussions, either on this channel, Inside Movies Galore, or um, Delusions of Grandeur. And this two pack is one that uh, was picked up last minute at Walmart um, for our discussion of the Jim Carrey star The Mask Woo! and you know Wonder of Wonders it also has The Son of the Mask <laughs> and, and this is a was that? I think I have that version myself. I think it's safe to say Son of the Mask is one of the worst films in my collection <laughs> uh, it was not unwatchable but uh, <laughs> but the mask is a lot of fun and we had a lot of fun with the discussion check it out if you haven't already and check out the movie if you haven't already because it is a classic oh, yeah <laughs> yeah some of the mask is, is special <laughs> <laughs> it is well we can't have all good ones but i, I had to get this mm -hmm. and that is shark bait Six Killer Shark Films. Nice. Now, there was one film in particular, and you know which one, if you've been paying attention, because Dustin's been talking about this. Uh -huh. And it's right up at the top. Ghost Shark. Nice. But none other than Cool Dude are involved in it, getting killed mm. in the pool. But we also, and uh, this shark goes into like, it just can, it appears in any form or body of water, including puddles and whatnot. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool, almost like House Shark. Matter of fact, I've got a couple shark movies in here. Um, <laughs> on this are uh, Mississippi River Sharks, 
Hmm. No, no, how many miss? Actually, I guess that could. There are sharks. Bodies there are. In the river. The bull shark is known to go well up the Mississippi. Yeah. No, I'm not sure how far up, but um, at least as far as northern Louisiana. Yes. I think they go a little further. You know, all the way up to uh, Missouri, um, <laughs> Illinois. Theoretically, theoretically possible. <laughs> Ozark sharks. <laughs> Less likely. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> and, and a Ozark and a Arkansas freshwater lake. <laughs> well, right. if they have a saltwater crocodile in a uh, Vermont lake, um, exactly. is Betty White there? She make anything possible, right? <laughs> Santa Jaws. <laughs> I gotta read this one. Is Around that gonna be one of your uh, December <laughs> picks, baby? I might actually. <laughs> so, grounded in his room at Christmas, aspiring comic book artist Cody imagines a predator to pick off the people he's mad at. But when his imagination becomes real life and people are disappearing, it's a race of survival. Ooh. And okay. Swamp Shark. Okay. Okay, well, it's possible there because they do go in saltwater swamps. Sometimes. Uh, well, technically, a swamp's a freshwater ecosystem, but, you know, whatever. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, zombie Shark. Okay. Zombie Shark could go in a freshwater ecosystem pretty fine. <laughs> I'm sure they could. And then they get an extra one. They call it Extra Bite. This one's an actual alligator movie called Alligator Alley. Hmm. So you get like, uh, you get seven films. Nice. All right. So it was like six something. Huh. So not bad, really. All right. Uh, I didn't get these. What's that? Well, I was going to say I didn't get these quite so cheaply. But these are not shark films but they are uh creature features after a fashion and one of them was a dustin pick on inside movies galore so i finally have the opportunity now to officially present godzilla hey. and godzilla king of the monsters the two recent american films um Loosely related to Kong Skull Island, which will be getting a tie-in with, uh, was it Godzilla versus Kong, I think it is? <laughs> Technically, our talk was on this one, but we did reference this one frequently. Fun movies, definitely fun movies. I enjoyed them a lot. I enjoyed this one more. I think we all did. But both excellent films and um, pretty worthy after the debacle that was uh, the 98 Godzilla, America finally got its head back in the game, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> pretty good movies. <laughs> pretty good. Especially, I like it better than the, uh, than the what do they call it, the uh, last one they did. Even though it was a major success box office. The last movie. one. The last American Godzilla. Oh, yeah. 98, I believe. And I don't know. You know, eventually they will do a movie called The Last American Godzilla. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> now, this one is a really cheap buy. This is a dollar store buy. Ooh. So, four got ten. I got <laughs> it's Day Trejo, right? Yeah, Day Trejo All and right. Run in it. And oh, nice. They're both the bad guys going after Johnny Messinger. Messinger. Huh. Uh, basically. So right. that's kind of uh, there. And uh, see, uh, Trejo is a Mexican cartel boss, mm -hmm. and uh, Lundgren's a DEA agent. Mm. So it's, uh, I don't know. I just enjoy uh, dumb acts. That, that is probably worth a dollar. I would yeah, be I happy. To, I would be happy to get that for a dollar. <laughs> 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 All right. That, 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 back to you. <laughs> I would have been happy to get this for a dollar, but that wasn't happening. <laughs> so, 
uh, one that we did do a very nice discussion. I think it went pretty good. Oh, well, I'm still trying to get all the way through it, but a uh, nice discussion on this channel uh, at the end of last month's anime uh, month. I picked up in uh, preparation for it uh, the Cowboy Bebop Steel Book, ah. which is a very, very nice edition. I did not really do a proper. You know, the, the discard is pretty much the same as it's been it's you know, all along. And um, I am a little bit perturbed. You know, I sometimes am. You get these little things that you want to keep. You feel like you should keep it with them. But it kind of doesn't really properly fit into the case without a little bit of damage. But I still, I made it work. But... This is a really nice edition. I did not get to watch all the bonus features. I got to watch a fair number, and I watched some of the English stuff, but not all of it. One day when I have time, <laughs> I'll be revisiting this. But I love the really retro. It's like a retro cigar case kind of look to it. Um, I, I think it's a really cool edition. It is really weird that Best Buy had it for a full month before Amazon did. Um <laughs> But, so, yeah, you know, screw Amazon. Go get it from Best Buy. Um, <laughs> it's definitely not a buck, but it's every bit worth getting this series, especially on Blu-ray. That is cool. Yeah. Yes, check out our discussion. Dave, one day yes. we'll finish it off. He better. <laughs> what his excuses. Yeah. <laughs> In any case, um, you know, it seems like my theme is cheap ass uh, <laughs> because it seems like I've been looking at the pile like, huh. <laughs> Quite what my theme is, but yeah. So yeah. Uh, this again at the Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. This is a Brittany Murphy film called Abandoned. There's a lot of oh. films Abandoned. And this is a pretty yeah. interesting concept because she has her like uh, significant other at the hospital, and then when mm -hmm. she comes back, he's disappeared, and nobody believes her that he was there or exists in the first place. I think yeah. I've heard that plot okay. before. It's like a, I, I swear I've seen I've seen some sort of coverage for it. I looked at it, and I mean, he's got Peter Bogoyev, not Bogoyev, Peter Bogdanovich, Mimi Rogers, and Dean Kane. It's not a terrible yeah. cast, and though it says seven dollars on here, it was one dollar when I got it. Is that uh, Peter Bogdanovich, the director? I do not know. That's kind of an interesting. Him and Dean Cain and Brittany oh, Murphy. Uh, that's a combo. Well, he's from The Sopranos. Hmm. I so, need to check on that. But anyway, <laughs> looks like an interesting thriller. I you know I like I like mm. the when I can find them. The late Brittany Murphy. She she died way too young. It was a shame. Um, so next up, speaking of youth, <laughs> I believe these people are all still around, but several of them have largely faded out of acting, and a couple of them have gone on to be huge stars. Um, another item that we will will be discussing tomorrow, which actually I guess is tonight, if I remember correctly, your timeline. Uh, <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> but on Inside Movies Galore, we will be discussing The Goonies. Yay! And it will be a fun discussion. And I got, it's got this nice little plastic case that I don't think it came in, but I'm debating keeping it because it's kind of cool. But, um, Kind of irritating when you want to get it out. But anyway, so it's the Steelbook edition, which is not the new Steelbook edition. I think this was the previous one. But it does have some decent bonus features in it, uh -huh. which you can't tell with any of the uh, cover art or anything. You know, you open up and you see the plain looking disc and a map, which is nice. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, Rewatched it again last night. I think that was the first time seeing it on Blu-ray. It's a fun movie. And I look forward to the discussion. Uh, and I look forward to your follow-up discussion. If I can make it, I sure hope I can. I sure hope I can make both discussions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, work is tricky. This one did not set me back that much, although apparently I almost got it cheaper. And <laughs> 
But uh, good, good film, good film, and uh, oh. look forward to talking about. Just watched my copy uh, yesterday evening. I uh. actually am shunning off all sugar until Halloween. Uh, mm. All processed sugar. I mean, I'll probably have some right. sugar in there, but. It's, right. uh, but yeah, the uh, Goonies, I got the 4K one, which I'll show y'all mm -hmm. later, down to that letter. Um, nice. I'm doing these alphabetically, except for the giant sets, which you'll see something like that later. Uh, um, but this next one is not super cheap, but, but. it's inspired by the Inside Movies Galore discussions. Mm. We uh, for because of, because of uh, Mo, we covered t uh, two Ralph uh, Bakshi uh, films. Mm -hmm. Not one of them. Mm. But this is one that I got relatively cheap. I got it for under 10. And that was American Pop, which covers a lot of different music styles, four particular ones, uh, storylines that take place, to uh, American music. And I have heard mm -hmm. a lot of good things about it. He's a very gifted animator. And mm -hmm. I really enjoy what I have, and this one has been long, long overdue. You know what's weird is that they even have this packaged with the Cowboy Bebop movie and a Blu-ray double pack, which, hmm. is, which is funny. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the music that brings them together. But still, it's kind of cool. I look forward to it. Yeah, I'll see that eventually. Hmm. All right. The next three will have an interesting little mini theme. I cannot, at this point, we are so far behind on pickups, I can't remember with certainty how many of the orders are like, you know, these were one order, these were another. You know, I remember a lot of them, but not all of them. And as we've talked about in before on this channel, um, Right Stuff has had some problems getting things out in a timely manner. Um, now, part of that was due to their unfortunate, uh, I think they got probably a little bit of damage maybe from that derecho that hit uh, in Iowa. But uh, they also have been having some staffing issues, which leads to some issues coming out because of all the COVID stuff. So anyway... They seem to have been hit harder than some of the other companies. So it's really confusing keeping track which order was which. Oh, yeah. But I think these three were one order. Because I remember, and there may have been one more item in there, but I remember thinking it was kind of weird. I actually devoted most of an order to kind of sort of upgrades. <laughs> uh, one of them is a direct upgrade one of them is essentially an upgrade but it adds a little bit to what I had previously and one of them is a partial upgrade slimming down definitely adds to what I had um, and that's the one I'm going to lead off with and that is a collection called the Dirty Pair Features ah, good which I already had an individual of the Dirty Pair feature called Affair of Nolandia. So now I can chuck that. And in addition to the Affair of Nolandia, I have Project Eden and Flight 005 <laughs> Conspiracy. So Ooh. three movies in the amount of space that would have been taken up by the one. So that's pretty cool. And the Dirty Pair is a fun, it's like 80s action. Uh, these two are kind of um, Jill of all trades kind of characters, if you will. But they have a very bad tendency to destroy everything they touch, which is why they are known throughout the universe as the Dirty Pair. <laughs> it's a fun show. And I've never, I don't think I've seen two of the movies that I don't have. So I look forward to seeing them. I have seen most of what the Dirty Pair has to offer. I actually was introduced to them through a relative of mine, a cousin. And mm -hmm. uh, through and the uh, VHS was Project Eden. Ah. I love the original... Uh, track the original dub track is hilarious. They redubbed it for that set. Did they? 
Okay, let's see. And uh, I have the original. Well, actually, class. it does say two English audio options, ADV and Streamline. Oh, cool. So, yeah, so I guess Streamline was the original. Yeah, I wish I had that option okay. online. Oh, well. <laughs> Nice. I, I do have I do have the original recording of the VHS, so that'll work. <laughs> right. So another Dollar Tree pickup. This one is one I know that you probably already have in your collection because you love this film. And this was a Kevin Spacey film oh. that got Oscar love. He's uh, or came close to getting Oscar love, and mm. that was Baby Driver. Also, oh, soundtrack. Yeah, they had the Dollar Tree. Yes. I don't yep. care. I have a steel book. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. I didn't feel like I needed anything more than what I've got. It's a decent one. It's got some decent. Oh, that's a good movie. Stuff. And uh, I've heard it's got a rocking soundtrack, so I need to yeah. get down and, and watch it eventually. Like, I got to watch a lot of things. <laughs> Baby Driver actually got a, a an Oscar for sound mixing. Oscar nod. And I'm convinced that it was because of the soundtrack. And it's the closest they've come to doing an Amuse of Music and Film Award. I wish they would do this. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Most definitely. And, of course, the sound editing nod was for much the same reason that uh, Ford v. Ferrari was up. It does have a lot of that good uh, auto stuff mixed in. Same with the film editing nod. And now I've got yeah. them together, and I've got four yeah. Ferrari in this collection. Yeah. You, should, you should watch them as a twofer. Yeah, cool. <laughs> All right. Next up, this one also features some great music. And this is one that I had to get in part because he told me that they actually went back and reconstituted the episodes the way they were supposed to be done instead of just having the music as a bonus feature, which is still nice with the addition I had. And that is the OVA and movie collection for I'm the One Half. That's a wonderful, that is a wonderful yeah. thing too. Now, I don't remember if you told me, does it have the new OVA or is it just the old ones? Um, none of the new, new stuff. Okay, um, that's just, too bad. Just but stuff. even so, yeah, this is definitely, this was already much higher budget, higher definition than the original Ranma series. So I expect the Blu-ray to look pretty good. It, um, it, it, it would theoretically save a ton of space on the shelf because this one collection is thinner than both the OVA and the movie collections. But I kind of want to keep them, at least the OVA collection, because... Of what they did with the music, it's sort of an oddity, kind of like we were just talking about, like the old dub with Dirty Pair. What they did originally was they took uh, the first half, had one particular theme. Actually, no, I think the whole thing had one opener and one ender. But originally, um, yeah. several episodes had one opener and one ender, and then each other one had new ones per episode. It, so, had, yeah, the, uh, the way that they did it is they had one opener, one ender for the first half, and one opener, right. one ender. Because the Red Shoe Sunday was the second half ender. Right. Um, and I cannot think of the names of the songs. But I, I think it, the first half ender was the ballad of, ballad of Run My Kind. Yes, right? that one. And, and then, then the open. And then, Bo and then Bore Tachiwa Korekara, uh, which is my favorite. Us from now on. Yeah, that was my favorite. Opener. That was the second opener. And the first opener was. Um, see, I ooh, can hurt in my head, but I cannot for the life yeah, of Yeah, I, mean, I can see the visuals. I remember the visuals for that. They have a big symbol at the beginning right. of it. <laughs> but this is, I, I still have the regular full size editions of the whole series. I have not started upgrading to Blu ray. And I'm going to, this was actually a really good price. Like it was on sale at a really good price. Can't remember what the price is at this point. <laughs> this tends to be pricey, but if there's a massive cut, like you could get each volume for 18, 20 bucks, I'll probably do it. <laughs> now, from what I've been told yeah. out of the anime collectors group, because they're envious of yeah. my volume four. Yeah. Volume four is like super expensive if you're getting it from the limited edition sets. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I know. And this is a limited set, I believe. It's got oh, the no. little booklet and oh, the, yeah. they have beautiful sets. I love the box. Yeah. The box feels solid. Yeah, nice box. It, it's it's just general. They're good sets. I mean, the beautiful. This, though, Kind of like I was saying with the Cowboy Bebop, though, this has a wraparound. It's probably yeah. going to have to go in my storage box because I can't really keep it on the... It's kind of annoying. Yeah. All right. So, um, I, again, for Inside Movies Galore, matter of fact, I have the other part of this week's uh, movie, yeah. which is Bad CGI Sharks. This oh, I'm going to have to get that. It costs <laughs> ten bucks. Well, actually, fairly expensive compared to all the other offerings I've had up so far. <laughs> Probably as much as it costs to film it. <laughs> they get a little bit. The next one's a little bit more expensive. Then it goes down right. in price again, and then it goes slightly up in price at the end. Yes. Um, but bad it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to beat that for quality, though. Bad CGI shark. <laughs> it it's, it's, uh, it's a low budget indie film about mm -hmm. these guys, like these brothers who really wanted to make shark films, mm -hmm. low budget shark films. And mm -hmm. they get separated, but then they get reunited. And through the, mm -hmm. for through movie magic, uh -huh. they're able to have CGI sharks invade their real life and try mm -hmm. to kill them all. Yes. For inspiration. Yes. <laughs> Courtesy, a tubby and badly accented director named Bernardo. <laughs> yes, this one was fun. I look forward to the discussion. To, uh, well, right. was it Wednesday? Yesterday night. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's going to be fun. I think uh, if you haven't checked it out, you should look at the Inside Movies Galore. Maybe mm -hmm. Jake will be with us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Maybe not. Who knows? Okay, okay. So real quick, hold that back up. We'll have our, uh, there you go. That's what you can look forward to. <laughs> that pre-show main show. Right. <laughs> okay. So next up, this one is a direct upgrade, and it is an upgrade. It is one that I was eyeing for a while. Uh, Nozomi slash 11 Arts, what have you put out some pretty bare bones editions of two really, really, really phenomenal films, and then decided, you know what, we're going to go back and put out some nice editions. I have only sprung for one so far, but I previously had Mario Okada's brilliant, and it is brilliant, directorial debut that was screwed over by the Academy. Uh, Makio and the Promised Flower Blooms. This is the regular edition. And this is the Purdy edition. Unfortunately, it's going to be kind of annoying on the shelf because you got a little tiny print there. Tells you what the title is. Uh, I'm assuming that's the title, but it's in Japanese. And then you got this pretty. nice little picture. What's that? That is pretty. Never, I mean, never opened it yet, but you got a thick ass book in there. You've got, there's a bunch of stuff in there. I'm not sure. I don't remember everything, but what were you saying? Yeah, I didn't get to order it in time. It got sold out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, it did. Mm -hmm. This was actually, it, again, it was at a pretty decent discount. Both of them. The other one was a silent voice, and yeah. still holding out hope on that one, but I don't know if I really should. Have you guys ever seen this one yet? I have not seen that one yet. Oh, uh, you guys see it's great. But um, it's it's a tearjerker. It definitely is a tearjerker. It's from, like I said, Marie Okada. She is the uh, she was a writer for a large portion of um, of uh, Hanasako Iroha. And um, she also worked on uh, Anohana. And so this one definitely has a little bit of a vibe of those two. And they're both awesome. So, <laughs> Well, one of my more expensive ones is coming up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one was for Moe's picks for his birthday next week. Uh, so I've got Lady Hawk, which is the main feature, I believe. Uh, I've, all, I've had Lady Hawk for years because it's, it's just one of those it's a staple of fantasy films. <laughs> But I did not have this because it was a it's a western and it was like fourteen bucks. 
Alan, that's crazy. Who? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, how, how do you say that? Cable. Hogue. Hogue? Cable Hogue. That's how I'd say it. But uh, I've never actually seen it uh, before, so it'll be my hmm. first watch this weekend. Hmm. Um, I'm not a big fan of westerns, especially old school westerns. I like some spaghetti westerns. Um, I like a couple of them here and there. But uh, I want to give us a chance. I'll give it a shot for you, Mo. <laughs> uh, very good. Good to be a team player. Have you have you seen this one yet? You, you actually. I have not. Yeah, I, I don't think I'd heard of that before Mo brought it up. Oh. <laughs> there's a lot. Well, there's a lot of westerns out there. That is true. We, we were in love with westerns as a country for a while, weren't we? Now, did you show me Lady Hawk or not? I don't, it's the one about the uh, well. It literally is about Lady Hawk, a woman who right. who was uh, turns into a hawk. Okay, uh, I don't think so. I know we've talked about it. It's definitely old school fantasy. I would have I would have brought it up if anything. Okay, and I actually uh, had totally forgot. I had totally not what. Oh, I had totally not. Uh, put two and two together in my brain. I just shuffle things around to save good stuff for the end. And then I was like, oh, well, you know, this is also a space saving upgrade. So, well, I'll stick with my theme for a minute. <laughs> and this was a recent Walmart pickup that was not pretty pricey considering that it's a seven season show. And this was 40. So it's not bad for seven seasons. Although now that I'm examining the box, I see how it opens and it ticks me off. I'll have to open it and leave it open until I'm done watching it. I hate it when they do that. But this is a series that I already had four seasons, and this collection is smaller than two of them. So space saver. <laughs> and that is the Lorne Michaels produced series 30 Rock which is a fun show. Very, very fun. Stars uh, Tina Fey as Liz Lemon, uh, showrunner for TGS. Uh, yeah, Jack McBrayer as the socially inept and downright insane Paige. Dane Krakowski, Jane Krakowski and Tracy Morgan as the overpriced prima donna stars of the show. And Alec Baldwin is Jack Donahue, the guy who runs, uh, if I remember correctly, runs NBC in the show. But basically, you know, he's the boss, the big guy. And there is a um, Ju Judah Friedlander and a whole bunch of other people in the supporting cast. And a ton of recurring and guest cameo characters. Steve Buscemi shows up occasionally as a private detective, and there's a lot of one and two shot cameos. The show gets on your nerves after a while because every one of these characters is certifiably insane, and you can only take them in small doses, but it's a fun show with one of the best opening themes ever put on a TV series. So glad to have that in a nice, pretty, condensed package. I like that it's a smaller package there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've got one that I am, I got at the Dollar Tree, and it has the potential to be very disliked because it's got a similar plot to American Beauty. Oh. About somebody who is kind of living an uneventful life, and then, uh, mm -hmm. but this time he actually is having an affair that kind of brings him out of it. Uh. And uh, this is uh, the movie Better Living Through Chemistry. I don't know this one. Sam I like Rockwell. the cast. Yeah. I was going to say, I like that cast. So, I mean, it's got basically the same concept. Yeah. Except this time, that... everything starts to turn around when he starts hooking up with this woman and they have their kind of drug and alcohol fueled affair. And he's just like uh, partying up and uh, feeling better about himself. But yeah, it sounds just like American Beauty. Well, I mean, that's what he wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh. It just, he, he never got to that part. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he would have at <laughs> the time. Right. It just beat him to the punch. 
<laughs> yeah, good times. All right. All right. So while we're talking about happy and cheerful, actually one theme, uh, this may be my theme for our next pickup video. I, I, I sure have enough to do it. Um, I've touched on it already with A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, which was a uh, pretty high ranked in my films for last year. I think it was in my top 20-ish. It wasn't much higher than that, but it was, I think, just within the top 20. I have a lot. I've said before, I'm trying really hard to get my top 20 lists. I'm trying really hard. This Next to, and I've got enough that I could probably do a full pickup just based on that. So yeah. that might be next week's. But these two that I'm going to end with are both in my top 10 for this past year. They were both really, actually, I think they're right next to each other on the list, actually. And it just happens that they arrived in my possession at the same time. Yeah. They would have arrived, one of them would have arrived sooner if Amazon wasn't slacking. But whatever. But these are both excellent, excellent, excellent films. And the first one kind of is a little bit of a feel good film, even though the premise <laughs> might have you thinking otherwise. <laughs> and that is Lulu Wang's instant classic, horribly snubbed by Oscar film The Farewell, which starred uh, a rapper turned actress Aquafina as the daughter of a Chinese family where the grandmother here in the middle, who uh, I don't remember who plays her offhand, she did a phenomenal job. Um, I don't recall offhand, um, but the grandmother is dying of cancer, but she doesn't know this because the family has elected not to tell her. They don't want her to know. They want everything they can do to distract her. So, um, and in fact, these two behind Aquafina are her parents. They tell her that she wears her emotions on her sleeve so she can't come home to China with them because she'll give it away in a heartbeat. And her father's played by Z Ma, who was in the Coen Brothers Lady Killers, and he's a pretty solid actor. He does a great job in the film, too. Um, these two here are her cousin. Well, the boy is her cousin. And this poor girl is a Japanese girl who gets roped into a scheme whereby the reason we're all going home to China is they're having a wedding for these two, even though they're friends who clearly don't have much chemistry at all. <laughs> and Aquafina does crash the party because she can't be kept away. She loves her grandma and she wants to spend time with her. And it's sort of a family drama, but with strong comedic undercurrents. And it's just a wonderful movie. Absolutely wonderful, great acting, very well done. Lulu Wang got robbed of an, a director nod. Uh, Aquafina arguably got robbed of an actress nod. Uh, there were a lot of ways this could have done better than it did. Um, but it flew under the radar. I never heard of it until it got some Golden Globe nods. So, yeah. But wonderful film. I've been patiently waiting for a chance to get it at a cheap price. Finally did. Had to buy it used to do it, but whatever. I'm very, very much looking forward to revisiting that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to say I have that one myself, but I don't know. If you don't, <laughs> you should. <laughs> and you need to see it. Did it win the Oscar again? I can't remember. It. But least. it wasn't up for any. Oh. That's what uh, I'm saying. Oh, uh, yeah, well. Actually, all three of my top 20 ones were up for a grand total of one Oscar. <laughs> well, my last one is a, uh, I guess it goes, I don't know if it goes along quite with the theme I've been setting of. Your last one? I thought you had one big one at the end. Well, it is my last one, isn't it? We did 11, right? Yeah, and I went first. Let's see. Oh, so you have one more, right? Yeah. 
Okay, I gotta get one more. Let me pull one. <laughs> I miscounted. All right, okay. well, we'll continue to go along with that. That works. You remember the whole thing where people were doing like the Charlie, Charlie, are you there? <laughs> sure. There was this little thing that was going around with the following this horror movie called The Gallows, which hmm. also at the Dollar Tree. Hmm. And it's about the school that has this play about like these nooses and hangings. And at this day and age, I'm not sure that kind of school really should be around uh, with that kind of theming. Um, but apparently there's a lot of noose related ghost related terror and there is a sequel that's coming out not too that's come out not too long ago mm. and uh, i've heard it's meh but it was also a dollar so i could but it also comes out with the gallows the original version the same story shot gorilla style this feature length version is what caught the attention of Hollywood producers. So they actually have the original film that inspired it on here as well, which is kind nice. of nice. But yeah, there was a while that people were just doing this thing and they had like this thing with the pencils and so on. And they were doing this like, Charlie, Charlie, are you there? And then they, the pencils would move or something. And um, they were all freaked out. You, you look up on YouTube, just like Charlie, Charlie, or whatever the heck it is, and you, you'll find it. Good times. So my last one is the one that finally arrived uh, from Amazon uh, a full week late, I believe. Um, but this is a, a movie that I got to see uh, in theaters that I very, very, very much enjoy. I it was a it's a gorgeous film, so that was a wonderful experience. And that is uh, Makoto Shinkai's follow-up to his global smash, Your Name, the excellent, not as good, but excellent film, Weathering With You, mm. lovely steelbook edition, which will be very cool. Um, unfortunately, does not have as many bonus features as... See, this was another one where a limited one was announced late in the game. But in all honesty, I think I might be just fine with this edition. It looks really cool at any rate. And it does have a pretty good bit of bonus features there. Shoot, any bonus features is good for yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> I think that interview may have, I saw a Fathom screening, and I believe oh, yeah. that interview might have been the one they played for that, which was a good, useful interview. Um, the film basically follows this guy, uh, Hodaka, who runs away from home. He basically lives on an island offshore and comes to Tokyo to escape his mundane life. And Tokyo has been in the grip of a massive amount of rain for some time. And he stumbles into a position basically doing research for a gossip rag, for back, lack of a better way of putting it. <laughs> they kind of do like paranormal, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Investigations. Um, but it's sort of thing, thick National Enquirer, but maybe a step or two up. <laughs> And uh, he gets put on a project about Sunshine Girls, and he ends up meeting one. And her name is uh, Hina, and she is a girl who has the ability to cancel out the rain. And um, mm -hmm. eventually they come to find out that obviously there's a lot to it. The movie in typical Shinkai fashion has the most depressing ending ever and then keeps going, and you come to realize it was kind of a fake out. You know, small spoiler alert, but be aware that that's not the ending of the movie. <laughs> it, it does have a little bit more of a feel of he was trying to be commercial than your name did, and that's one of the reasons it's not as good. 
but it's every bit as gorgeous. It does have a tie in to your name. One of the stars shows up briefly. And it's just a, it's a fun movie. And it was still one of my top picks for the year. And how it wasn't up for animated feature, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. uh, I look forward to doing off my copy one day. And then probably about the time that you finish this set, right? <laughs> well, as I, as I said, this is my theme was uh, kind of low budget ones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I guess in comparison to how it's going for now, it's low budget. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that you, is... did, you did get it at what well, it was essentially a steep cut discount. <laughs> the Gamera Complete Collection Arrow Set. Nice. Now I'm going to show this off a little bit at a time. It's got some amazing art, a lot of it by uh, Matt Frank, who did a lot, does a lot of Godzilla art. Mm -hmm. This has all of the Gamera movies in it, mm -hmm. as confirmed by our Gamera expert, Mo. Of course, this little <laughs> thing comes with it. it, has all the movie uh, synopsis. All right, let's, let's take this bad boy apart. <laughs> Not literally. <laughs> I paid too much for it to be literally. So this is actually concept art of a uh, of a creature that Gamera was going to fight, but didn't end up uh, making it into it. Hmm. She got some more Gamera art, and this is like a, a basic Gamera book where you've got like a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna have to read on this eventually. Monster designs. Hmm. You've got. Um, different uh, stuff. I really understand why people watch these films, because it really is when you're down, if you just sit here and do a marathon of these things, it's hard to be down afterwards. It really is. <laughs> because they're so, they're so cheesy, and they're so fun. Coach, I watched the first two films, and then got kind of sidetracked, had other things going on. But also with this comes the Gamera comic collection. That's nice. But you've got all the like camera these Gamera comics that are uh, bound into one Dark Horse release. So some nice stuff there. But just to give you a uh, basic run, you got Gamera. Mm -hmm. I'm almost afraid to open these, but I'm gonna right. read it eventually. Right. It's on my list. These arrow box sets are really awesome, but they get they get sold out so quickly. And this one was a bad case for that. Oh yeah. I mean, Amazon ordered it, it took too many orders, which is what I think is going to happen with this PlayStation Five. My guess is that they've taken too many pre-orders again, yeah. and then they're just going to tell people, "Well, you can hold on to your order until the next um, the next order." Mm -hmm. Or uh, we'll just give you your money back. But this is the actual discs. As you can see, it's sort of like the Godzilla set in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Not quite as tall as the Godzilla set, but definitely thicker. Yeah. Let me stand up a little well, bit. Well, I like how they have all that nice art in there as you go. I, mean, I don't like that they've got the... Um, that they've got these like uh, slots for them. Yeah. But you know, and then you've got these two in the back, which I kind of briefly shut off. Where you've got these Gamera art cards. Huh. I'll show those off real quick, because Lord knows I'm probably not going to uh, take them out again. <laughs> Giving all a, a nice Gamera unboxing. Thanks. Uh, if you want to know more about Gamera, you should check out Drunken Master Studios for his Kaiju Quarantine. He's covered a number of the films and plans on eventually covering all of them. So you'll be able to learn about all of these monsters there. And he is quite knowledgeable about all things Gamera. This is, so what does that look like to you? Which... 
one. The ship. Oh. Huh? <laughs> looks somewhere to something else we've seen in movies. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the space ball ship. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and this, and then one more. But I'm really mm -hmm. psyched about this set. It's probably one of the cooler sets mm -hmm. out that I've seen. I mean, they just do such an excellent job with this. Um, it reminds me a lot of the um, Herschel Gordon Levitt set that they did, which. Mm -hmm was uh, a pretty nice one but again that one i don't think you would be into as much because that's all about gore and right this is what the set actually looks like when you got the little thing on there yeah so i'll be working on this set a little bit at a time once the room is together it'll probably be more than it used to be see regrettably that was much like the upcoming uh friday the 13th set that he talked about Something that I wanted, but I didn't want it bad enough. But I still look at that and go, I want. I mean, that was 120 at the time. Exactly. That's too much. <laughs> uh, if I could have gotten it for 60, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah and, I, and I will say this. Now, there, for those of you yeah. who want the set, there mm -hmm. is hope. There's mm -hmm. not going to be a second run on the um, on the limited edition, but they're going mm -hmm. to do a regular edition. Yeah. I mean, right now this this set is going uh, is on eBay for between two hundred and fifty at the lowest and three hundred and seventy five at the highest. Mm. And they're not a lot of copies of it either. Right. So you know. A lot of the scalpers, they got a hold of them pretty early, so you got to really jump on them if you want them, unfortunately. Yeah. And I knew that one was, I knew that one, and I know that the Friday the 13th one, that one's not sold out yet, though. There's still time if you really want it, because it's going to sell out, and it's going to be, if the, if the Halloween set, which I want to say I do have that one Yeah. back there, um, that one is any indicator. It's going to be pretty expensive. The European I can imagine. But this one, like, for instance, this arrow set goes yeah. for a pretty penny nowadays. And I got it because it has all four of the house movies, whereas the American version of this, which also is out of print, right. has um, only the first two. Hmm. So... <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's kind of fun. And besides, many of those many of those arrow releases are region free. Right. Uh, I think they intend that. <laughs> they yeah. say region B, but when you put it in the player, it plays. <laughs> so I, may, I may have to look into more of those, I guess, because they have some good titles you just can't get here. But Mall Rats is coming to uh, uh, Arrow Blu-ray next week too. Really, I must have missed that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's one of the big ones. You asked me about that. Okay. So but, that'd be a priority, right? <laughs> well, I don't uh, know. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> Certainly a yes, please. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Uh, inc incidentally, we've been hit or miss on doing anything lately. So I don't think we presented this in the in the upcoming. That would have been a priority, I think, since we both pre-ordered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely high yeah. uh, it might have, It was probably yeah. in one of the slideshows, though. Yeah, probably. But, uh, we're going to get back to it. Once everything gets done, election season ends, and then we'll be back into something. Mm, yes, we'll be in something. Yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you like it. Of course, hit subscribe. Mm -hmm. We always appreciate those new subscribers. We have a close-knit family here that we enjoy uh, our viewers uh, with. And... Of course, we have some fun stuff coming up. We got yeah. a big discussion. Uh, we got a couple big discussions coming up. We've got a um, a let's play series that I'm working on, um, which I've already filmed the first episode of. We've got the Gunslinger Girl discussion coming up Monday. Yeah. And if things work out, I'm going to have a fairly popular special guest on at 10 Eastern Standard Time. 
to give his nice. thoughts on our Goonies discussion. Good deal. It's going to be fun. So uh, I've got some. We got some great stuff there, and uh, of course, I hope you enjoy. And we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Bye.